Hello, everyone. This is Jenkins Platform SIG meeting. Today, we're on the 12th of March, 2024. And around the table, I would say face-to-face -face with just the two of us, Mark Waite and myself, Bruno Verhachten. Uh, as always, we have a few, just one, open action items. We'll talk um, just a little bit because I don't think much progress to see there about Java 21. We'll talk about the Will's work on agent and controller images, the work in progress on the images, and a little bit about Docker-based quick start tutorials. And if time permits, we'll say a few words about Risk Five. So as oh. always, oh, go well, ahead, Mark. One more item. One more item for the agenda: an announcement about uh, mm -hmm. the Ampere server and running its first jobs. No way! Oh, so cool! Bang! Wow! Oh, you have to, yeah. Okay. So put uh, it in there. We'll, we want a topic. Yes. No, that's a topic I want to talk about first. But no. Uh, okay. right, first is first is fine. We can talk about it wherever you want. I just want to be sure it's on the no, agenda. No, I just wait. I'm just a kid, you know, in a candy store. I want the biggest uh, sweets. Whatever. Uh, so as for Blue Ocean Docker container, I know we still have to communicate more about its deprecation. I think it was last week or the week before. We had on communityjenskin.io a user complaining about um, the actual Docker container not up to date uh, with the latest versions of everything. Of course, uh, it's deprecated. And I told this user, maybe you should do the other way around, you know, start with a fresh uh, Docker agent or Docker SSH agent, and then add the Blue Ocean plugin to get it to work. But well, uh, that didn't end uh, the right way. Um, the, and you, he was pretty pissed off, but that kind of thing has happened. It is deprecated and we should let the end users know it's not such a good idea to keep using that. Well, and, now, and that user yeah, that, you, that user showed a, an anti pattern, right? The anti pattern was, "Ooh, I'll upgrade upgrade the Jenkins WAR file inside the container image," and that's that's actually absolutely upside down. You want to yeah. use a new container image as your from, yeah, yeah. I think he was kind of desperate to get things up to date, and he thought that maybe that was the only way to do it. Mm -hmm. But no, not such a good idea either. So I don't know if you have a, any better idea than starting from a fresh Docker agent image and then install oh. the plugin. That's what I do. Okay, and even better, switch to <laughs> the new pipeline grab view if you can. Well, uh, Mark, I haven't seen any news on the Java 21 support, the 2 plus 2 plus 2 Java support plan, but... That was expected. Uh, there are lots of discussion to be had, right? Right. Although, okay, there is there is a piece of news here that's worth oh, really? worth highlighting that I have some responsibility for. Maybe not in here, but in the meeting notes. It's not inside this, but oh, okay. uh, I saw while I was on vacation, uh, uh, there was a recent Twitter announcement from the Spring Project. Yeah. So the folk, the people who do Spring Boot and Spring Security Framework. Um, the Spring Project has announced the end of life uh, of Spring Boot 5.3, of Spring 5.3, let's just call it Spring 5.3, and Spring Security 5.8 mm -hmm. in August of 2024. And the reason that matters to us is I believe, uh, I've got to check with the experts, but I believe Jenkins uses Spring Security 5.8. And so we'll okay. need to switch to the new version of Spring Security, but I think Spring Security 6.1 or 6.2 requires Java 17. And therefore, oh. we can't really make that change until the October or November end of life of Java 11. So it's that's a it's a complication that needs to be discussed. Um, it may be that we ask the spring security people, it may be that we accept things and say, fine, we'll run with a, an officially end of life spring security between August and November. 
or we ask the Spring Security Project, would you, for the benefit of the Jenkins Project, please be willing to answer our questions until we drop it off end of life? Uh, I've I've got to have some discussions there in probably the Jenkins developer mailing list. And I can put, I'll, let, let me see if I can find the tweet and put, yep, put a you. link to their blog post because their blog post was wonderfully clear. They did a really good job of describing, look, we've given Spring 5.3 mm -hmm. this very long life, an unusually long life. It's time now for us to switch off and we're going to Java 17. I, I was wondering because I know I have read this tweet and maybe even the article. Did you retweet that? Uh, I did, yes. Oh, that's why. I, I was I, wondering, I, how did I uh, read that? Because I even didn't know Jenkins was using the Spring Security 5.8. So that's thanks to you. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Mark. Well, and and that was, and and the, the, the fact of Spring, we don't actually use Spring Boot, as far as I understand, mm -hmm. just the Spring Security Framework. Security. But that's already an important thing. And the, the mention of 5.8, which I think is the spring security version that matters to us, uh, was sort of an, a, a brief mention in one sentence in the, in the, the announcement. So it's okay. not immediately obvious from the title that this would affect Jenkins, but I think it will. So I'll put the a hyperlink to that into the document, into the notes here. Thank you, Mark. Thanks a lot. Um, anything else regarding Java 21 or the two plus two plus two? Um, well, so we've, we've certainly still got to capture what we learned from the Jenkins contributor summit for two plus two plus two. Uh, and we've made progress that Basil Crow and Vincent Latomba have both done, um, improvements. Actually, it should, it should be the other direction. Vincent started it. So Vincent Latomba, um, was the one who started the the implementation of improvements for that help with the transition from eleven to seventeen. There's still more to do, but but it's it's really great that they've started that. Okay. Thank you. Oh, so and you found the link. Cool. I did. Yeah. Thank so. You. And now I've got to double check that I'm I'm not mistaken in terms of the version of Spring Security Framework that we use in Jenkins Core. I'll go check that now. Yeah, why not? Yes, we have Spring Security Bomb 5.8.10 that is included. And so we've got to think more about what does it mean during that August to November or August to end of October time. Actually, it's just August to end of October time while Spring Boot or Spring Security no longer supports 5.8 for open source or for publicly, but they're willing to do it for commercial. And so we, oh. they might be willing to to extend life for us briefly. Yeah, fingers crossed. I know that the uh, which project is it? Jetty project has done that for us, where they've they've accepted that hey, we're we're a little bit of a special case, and they've yeah. extended <laughs> life just a little. Uh, we don't want to create a burden on them, but on the other side, we're we're grateful consumers of their work. No, no, I'm wrong. Spring Spring Framework Bomb is five point. Oh no, Spring Security Bomb is five point eight, and we have the yeah. Spring Framework Bomb five point three. So both of them are in our oh. list. Okay, good. Okay, well, that's so good some to know. More work on the Jenkins Project Community Plate. Oh, that's cool. well. Yeah, actually, could you could you make a note here? This this is I should have done this research before the meeting, but let's put it in. It's not just Spring Security. So. Under the headline that talks about, under the item that says end of life for Spring Security 5.3, yep. note that Jenkins uses the five, currently uses 5.3.32. 5.3.32. And so we'll. 
Okay. Uh, yep. Sorry. Yes, 5.3.32. At least the bomb is included in our our bill of materials. So uh, 32, not 22. And so that that means we've really got multiple components that during this August to October time frame, uh, we need to decide what do we do with them. I'm not. I don't think we sh we can or should accelerate the end of life of Java 11 for the Jenkins project. We've said October. We hold to October, but during this period, we'll be off the edge for Spring Framework and Spring Security. Thanks a lot. Uh, that was kind of unexpected uh, from me, but that's really interesting. And yeah, we have to keep on moving on the versions of Java. There is right. no other choice. And that's a good thing. Uh, now, on to the release work on agent and control images. So of course, we had the two weeklies of 448 and 449. Nothing special in the 448. The only thing I noted in the 449 um is that there is something linked to a platform i mean um there were two prs one which addresses the need to not attempt a restart on a rating system where uh it's not supported i guess it's mac os or are there, i don't know i haven't looked at that i didn't know if that was just about a mac os or if there are other Target well, OS. well, so this this the os that's specifically referenced here is a tandem nonstop. And tandem nonstop is a, a Linux variant. It's actually a Unix variant, oh, but okay. it's designed for high availability. Think of it as a competitor to who are the other people who do major fault tolerant work. It's a fault tolerant operating system intended to be the kind of operating system where you pull a processor out and it keeps running, that kind of thing. You yank disk uh -huh. drives out and it just ignores you and keeps running, that kind of that kind of level of fault tolerance. And tandem nonstop. And uh, in this case, it is a Linux variant, but does not have um, one of the libraries that we need. Oh. Uh, and so what Basel implemented is, hey, detect that that library is not there and don't attempt to do the to do the steps that would use that library if the library is not there. OK, is it, uh, it can be the libc. It is GNU libc, yeah. It is. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, if I look excited, that's because I have the same kind of problem on another operating system that is not supported. Mm -hmm. Whereas I don't have a libc, every time I start, I restart. You know, after updating plugins, for example, it just say, uh, "No, I can't find libc. I can't restart, and I have to kill Java all by myself." And it's a manual process, and it's a pain in the neck. Yes, it's Android. Uh, <laughs> And so yeah. this will fix that. This should. Oh, you're, that's you're, great. You're a very good test case. This should fix that. So if you'll try 2.449, you should see that it will behave much better. I run the weekly. Uh, so yeah. oh, that's super news. Ah, I love okay. this. Now, now, there was another piece of news on 2.449. Oh, that, that I missed. Sorry. Is unrelated to Docker, to containers. So, so actually, and it's unrelated to the change log. It is that oh. while the 2.449 build was being run, one of our mirror providers um, is offline doing an operating system upgrade. Yes, oh. they're upgrading from CentOS 7 to something newer that's supported. We're delighted mm -hmm. that they're doing that upgrade. That's exactly the right upgrade, right? Good choice. But they're they because of the complexities of that upgrade for them, they they're needing three days to do the upgrade. So Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week, they're down. Um however, we have multiple mirrors. Therefore, it's not it's not a catastrophe that one of the mirrors is down. Right now, the 2.449 release is only mirrored on four of our seven or eight mirrors. So, but it is at least mirrored on four. So it's mirrored in, in China. It's mirrored on one machine in the United States and on two machines in Europe. 
So we've got reasonable coverage, even yep. with this mirror being down. I had two machines in Europe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't know why. So it's Belnet and uh, University of Aachen. Oh, so neighbors. Uh, exactly. In Aachen, just next to the Belgian border. Correct, right. Cool. Um, mirror, let's be clear. Okay. Correct. But that's a good thing they are leaving CentOS 7. <laughs> right, right. That, that, that is, there is no complaints from anyone. They provide great service. They donate that mirroring service to us. It's the Oregon State University Open Source Lab. They donate th those services to us. They've donated them to us for years. We've been such a happy consumer of their work. And, yeah. and it's very, I'm, I'm delighted that they're doing the upgrade. That's really great. Next week, they will upgrade another one of their servers that we use it will probably be a lower impact or maybe it's later this week. It'll be a lower impact than this one because this is a specific one we mentioned by name. And I think I saw a new mirror. I don't know if it's not, if it's already running or not no, in that's, Romania. That's a, yeah, that's two. We're, there's two. potential for two more mirrors in Romania and we cool. we would love to have them. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Mm -hmm. Uh now for the Docker agent, uh, just a few version bumps that led to one new release. Uh, so we had two version bumps on Windows with Git LFS and Git and on Debian with the latest version of Bookworm. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a work you started with uh, Kenneth Thaleno or maybe he did it all by himself. It was just on the controller that the two of you work together. It's a removal of uh, PPC 64 LE uh, preview images for JDK 21 and a real standard official uh, JDK uh, 21 images instead. Correct. And now I, I'm not sure that the agent images have finished their transition off of preview images. PPC 64 is, is done, but I think there yep. are still maybe others that are delivering preview images that that work's still remaining. I think for ARM v7, that's for sure, because there are no official version for ARM 7 v7. Uh, but for the other ones, I just can't remember the list. But yes, not all of them have finished migrating to uh, the official images. Right. Now, for the work in progress on images, we still have the long running uh, update CLI, GDK 11, and 17 manifest for Windows. It's a draft for. It has been a draft for quite a long time, but it's not an urgent work. So that's pretty good. Thank you, Hervé, for the work. Um, now for Docker agent, we have two PRs which are related uh, in review now um, because update shall I change it, change uh, some things here and there. And lately it has um, made mandatory to add the um, architecture uh, because a long time ago uh, you, a few versions ago, I would say, you would just have to add ARM v7 or, um, or ARM AMD64, and then it would do its magic and find the right Docker image. Now you have to write Linux AMD64 or Windows uh, AMD64 or Linux slash ARM v7. So a few of our manifests are not up to date with the latest versions of update CLI. That's why uh, the latest versions of the JDK aren't up to date anymore on the um, uh, Docker agent project. That's unfortunate, but we are working on it. So we have two different PRs. The first one is pretty straightforward. It's just adding architecture. So adding Linux in front of a line, uh, ARM v7, for example, or adding Windows where it's a Windows image so that it works again. And the other one is more tricky. It's also about changing the script file that we're using to detect the exact version of the Tamarin um, image. And yeah, sometimes you have a plus, sometimes you have a minus, sometimes you have an underscore. It's kind of difficult. And the problem we are facing these days is because there are some minor, some patch versions of the Tamarin binaries. And some of them are only targeting macOS. Uh, so of course there is no Docker image for macOS. So the GitHub says, oh, I've got a new version. And then we're looking for a new version on Docker Hub and we can't find it. So this latest PR tries to help with that. 
Uh, as for Docker SSH agents, we have also two PRs on the same subject, um, which are in review now. It's about Windows, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's a bump of Git LFS. And I saw you react on one of these, uh, Mark, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, because we had another uh, a previous version. Uh, I think it was... Oh. I can't remember, but whatever. Uh, in fact, it's a bump git LFS14341 and 14351. And I think that the two of them need the, the same fix because they don't build for the time being. So it's- Well, and Hervé, Hervé had provided that fix in us in another pull request. So, okay. so it, but, but I, I think right now his time is better spent in other places. So it, it yes. may be a while before those things are updated. And nobody asked for that uh, update except uh, Dependabato or DCI. So that's okay. Right. Uh, we don't have any CV or whatever to do. So we can go ahead and do it when time's permit. Uh, now, uh, Docker based quick start tutorial. So the Node.js tutorial is done, it's live. And now we're working on the multi branch pipeline tutorial. Thanks for approving my PR, by the way. Uh, so that the sample repo corresponds to the actual documentation. It's almost uh, ready to go. I still have a few screenshots uh, to adapt and that should be okay. And then we'll tackle with the main Jenkins install within thanks to Docker documentation. Yeah, we'll see. And um, just in case, I also started the code, not the tutorial, just the code for uh, an Android uh, version, just in case we would have the time to write, uh, get started with Android and Jenkins. And same for Golang. Uh, this week, I started to have a Docker file specified for Golang. I made my first test and it seems to work. I'm not fluent uh, in Golang at all. Maybe one day, one day, we'll see. Mark, <laughs> next subject, the Ampere server run its first job. I didn't expect that before the end of March. So how did you do that? Yeah, so well, actually, are you okay stopping sharing your screen? Yes, Let me course. share mine because I want to show my screen. I, I think this is a fun one just to show where we're at. Uh, let me write, find the button. Oh yeah, of course, stop share. Go ahead, Mark, thank you. Okay, so here's what I've got on my system. Uh, let's see. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So what this is, is I took the machine as shipped. Thankfully, they included an operating system on an internal drive. Oh. It happens to be CentOS 8, an operating system I have no experience with. So CentOS 8 stream, and that's that's fine. Whatever operating system they chose is great. But notice the labels. Arch64, CentOS, good. CentOS 8, good. Now, if we look at the build history... We see all sorts of jobs that have run on this machine. And wow. these are just the freestyle projects, not the uh, not the the pipeline projects, because pipeline projects don't show up in this view at all. And so this set already. So for instance, the Git plugin, the Git client plugin built one of its jobs on it. And if we were to look at the console output, we'd see, oh, hey, here it's using this ampere machine and it worked just great so yes arch arm 64 worked great it did a bunch of downloads ran all its tests passed reported the results just fine yeah it's um boring to um use a turn coined by john masters uh it just works you know it's boring it works Ex exactly and that is and that is precisely what we want, right? That is a that is a marvelous story. Deepest thanks to Ampere for for letting us borrow this computer. It's it's a great piece of work. There's certainly still much more to do to find the most effective way to use it for the Jenkins project, because yes. the infra team may want to use it for various things. But right now, it's definitely doing useful work for the Jenkins project on my behalf. Right now, it's testing. Jenkins 2.440.2 .2, um, oh. release candidate. So the release candidate for next week's long-term support release is being used. That's cool. So it's 
an agent, but it's also a controller. No, no, I haven't run a controller on it yet. Oh, so okay. this but... is just the agent, but the agent is that's being executed is from 2.440.2 release candidate. Um, I can see labels like high mem, high RAM, and so on. Is it something that you added yourself or yes, you just yeah. detect? Oh, okay. No, I was, so well, so give that was some, some of, of these magic. are automatically detected by the platform labeler, like yeah. this one, right? These, the architecture and the, well, actually here, let's look at it and see, you can see which ones are, here are the labels that I declared. Okay. It has Git 227 on it. It's got a lot of memory and, and it runs very, very well. And uh, now it's only got 32 gig of memory, but from in my environment, that's a lot. Uh, but okay, it's got 160, also... 160 Sorry, cores. No. Go ahead. How many cores? 160. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's, it's, it's a very, very nice contribution that Ampere has given, has let the Jenkins project borrow this computer yeah. and put it to work. And it's, it's, it's a very nice piece of work. Really grateful to them. That's all it's that really... I had to show. Anything else you wanted to see? On it? No, I just also I high RAM, but I didn't see that lab label um, written by yourself. So is it also something you added by yourself? Yeah, the yes, high it RAM? Is. yeah. So oh, if you okay. look here, here's the here's the high RAM high. Oh, high no no high, high mem. mem high mem is high RAM is implied by high mem because I have this thing oh. called the label implications plugin installed, which says if you have if you have label X, it will use that as label okay. Y. That's cool. Was so this one is derived from, from, from the existence of this label. That's super cool. Thanks for sharing that, Mark. And definitely this machine uh, deserves more RAM. <laughs> well, it, it's, it's great what it's got, but yeah. And I haven't figured out how to open the open the case. That's been a complication. Mm. Is getting inside the box has been a surprise, a little more difficult than I expected. I need somebody to teach me how to open the box. Yeah, I won't be that one because I have opened quite a lot of servers, but when they were already discarded, so right. I know how to open them with a pry bar. But I don't think that's a good idea. Right, and and that's not the way we want to treat a a, a, bar, a borrowed server. So absolutely, it's still the property of Ampere. They own it, and so I want to be sure I return to them in good condition. Using a cutting yeah, torch yeah, is probably not the right choice. Um. So am I sharing my screen? You are. I can see it just great. That's cool. Um. Yeah, nothing much to do. Uh, Conrad, that's amazing. Uh, I love that. And speaking of machines, I have uh, lame machines compared to that. But nonetheless, uh, we do love when some hardware vendors or other uh, companies want to sponsor Jenkins by lending them or giving them some a machine that could be helpful for the project. For example, I haven't opened the box yet, but I have received a RISC-V board from Tiel Lim, uh, I think he's a Pine64 CEO that we met during FOSDEM at the Jenkins booth. Um, and he also sent two ARM64 boards, but they just don't compare to your Ampere server. So let's just forget about them. But yeah, a RISC V board, why not? It's still early uh, because the ecosystem is not that um, mature, I would say. But that's, at least to me, that's interesting for the future of Jenkins. And we are also in the very last step in the process to get the Milk 5 Pioneer box. I will put the link later on. Uh, it's also a Risk 5 machine. We talked about that um, maybe two or three uh, meetings ago. Uh, I think it's a 64 cores uh, Risk 5 machine. So that would help us uh with our first experiments with uh, jenkins and risk five because for the time being we've been uh trying machines with one core and <laughs> it's slow of course and the machine from uh, pine 64 i think it's a uh, six or eight cores but uh, yes 64 will be much better we'll see uh anything else you would like to share mark nothing else from me Okay, thank you. Uh, the video should be available from 24 to 48 hours, and we'll see each other two weeks from now. And until then, have fun with Jenkins. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.